when the first Incredibles came out, as you may remember, I was kind of lukewarm about it. Um, there was a bizarrely, f- well, no, not not entirely bizarrely. There was an anxiety in Pixar as to whether or not the the, the the opening section of the movie would alienate kids because the stuff with you know the domesticity with the with the family sort of they they did worry about it, and I predicted in my review that that the kids would have a problem with it. I was wrong. I mean, boy, oh boy, was I wrong. And I discovered that I was wrong when the DVD came out and it then went on hard rotation in my house. And it was like ah oh, ah oh, there we go. So you know I'm the first to admit that I was wrong about it. Um, However, I did kind of really, really love the Jack Jack Attack shorts, uh, short film, and uh, so come to the Incredibles two with the uh, awareness of having you know been wrong the first time round. Uh, now, the sort of tables are turned, uh, as we heard from the Holly Hunter review there, Elastigirl is taken off to be the sort of the PR face of rehabilitating supers by doing lots of great uh, pub, you know publicity attracting things involving trains and villains while Mr Incredible is staying at home having to deal with his son's maths homework, his daughter's uh, uh, first crush and, of course, the emerging powers of baby Jack-Jack. And um, so you do have all that, the domesticity stuff before and, you know, whether it's to do with how I've changed or whatever, I did find all the stuff about the dad you know, desperately trying to do the maths homework. If you've actually, you know, been through them, you know, how can they change maths? It's maths, although he says math because he's American. I did, I did find that yeah, really... because kids learn it in a different way. Exactly. You don't want to teach them the wrong thing, and that's what Mr Incredible is. Yeah, does. and so anybody who's... So I did find all that funny, but the thing that really sold it for me was two things. Firstly, that future retro design, that kind of faux 60s, you know... Firstly, I wanted to... The house that they go to live in, I wanted to go and live in that house. It's and not I, a real house. I Mark. know it's not a real house. I know it's a... You know, it's a construction, but I don't care because um, it looks like a real house. And in fact, there are things in the film that are virtually photorealist. And um, and I thought all the furniture was brilliant and I wanted to own all the furniture. And the second thing was when the Despicable Me series started, I loved the Minions and I wasn't crazy about the rest of the film. And then as the, as the series went on, there was more Minions. And I said to you, more Minions, more funny, more laughs. And in this case, there's more Jack-Jack and more Jack-Jack, more funny, more laughs. The stuff with Jack Jack for me has the kind of purity of, I mean, I always make this comparison, but it's great silent slapstick, rather than silent, wordless slapstick. When you look back at the history of cinema and you look at, you know, Keaton and Lloyd and all that sort of stuff and the physicality of it, it's there is something pure cinema about it. And there is something pure cinema about Jack Jack, which also does connect with the minions because they're, they're both babbling. You know, Jack Jack doesn't form, does baby spit in the same way that the minions do, all that stuff. And I started laughing at Jack Jack and his superpowers, some of which are quite scary and involve, you know, dimensional shifts and fire and all the rest of it. But I started laughing, and the minute I started laughing, all the reservations I ever had about the Incredible series just went out the window. And I smiled and I loved the way it was done and I was completely won over by it and it was it was interesting for me because it, for me I thought Incredibles 2 was better than Incredibles I say that with the knowledge that I probably mis well, not I probably I clearly misjudged Incredibles because I was you know people always say your opinions are your opinions there's no right or wrong well I was wrong in as much as I said kids won't get this they, there is there is a risk that kids won't get this. And I was 100% wrong about that. And I still have never fallen in love with the first Incredibles film. It may be now as a result of Incredibles 2 that I can go back to it and actually, you know, and, and, and experience that, you know, that, that wave of affection that everybody else has seen to. But as far as Incredibles 2 is concerned, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a treat for the eyes. I thought that the slapstick stuff was was really funny. I thought that the, you know, the the exhaustion and the domesticity tearing you apart that you know I'm I'm Mr Incredible I'm not Mr Sosa I thought all that stuff worked really well but I have to tell you that the thing that really bolted me into the film was the Jack Jack stuff which I just I found and I again I know what everyone thinks about me and my affection for the minions but I found it as funny as the minions